The Korowai, also called the Kolufo, are the people who live in southeastern West Papua in the Indonesian province of Papua, close to the border with Papua New Guinea. They number about 3,000. Until the late 1970s, when anthropologists embarked on a study of the tribe, the Korowai were unaware of the existence of any peoples other than themselves. Language <inaudible> 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 The Korowai language belongs to the Ayu Dumit family southeastern Papua and is part of the Trans New Guinea phylum. A dictionary and grammar book have been produced by a Dutch missionary linguist. Living It has been claimed that the majority of the Korowai clans live in tree houses on their isolated territory, but the BBC revealed in 2018 that the Korowai had constructed the tree houses for the benefit of overseas program makers and did not actually live in them. Since 1980 some have moved into the recently opened villages of Yanaruma at the Beking River Banks Kambai Korowai area, Mu, and Mabasman Korowai area. In 1987, a village was opened in Mangjail, in Ufufla 1988, Mabul at the banks of the Islanden River 1989, and Kaiflambolup 1998. The village absenteeism rate is still high, because of the relatively long distance between the settlements and the food sago resources. The Korowai appear to now smoke tobacco but not to drink alcohol. Economy The Korowai are hunter-gatherers and horticulturalists who practice shifting cultivation. They have excellent hunting and fishing skills. Information about Korowai trade patterns is scant. The Korowai have a few gender-specific activities, such as the preparation of sago and the performance of religious ceremonies in which only the male adults are involved. Some Korowai have since the early 1990s generated moderate cash income by working with tour companies selling tours into the Korowai region. Within the tourist industry, opportunities are limited to hosting tour groups in villages for tourist-sponsored sago feasts, carrying luggage, and performing traditional displays. Kinship The Patriclan is the central unit with respect to social, economic, and political organization. Kinship terminology follows the Omaha I pattern Lounsbury, knowing a central opposition between cross and parallel relationships. In Korowai society the forms of institutional leveret and predominance of avuncular relationships are found, as well as a kind of a final avoidance relationships. Marriage is exogamous and polygynous. Preference is given to a conjugal relationship with the classificatory mother's mother, s brother's daughter. Topic: <laughs> Social life. Topic: Leadership structures are based on personal qualities of big men rather than on institution. Interclan warfare occurs mainly because of witchcraft and sorcery-related conflicts. Religious life The Korowai universe is filled with all kinds of spirits, some more personal of character than others. Reverence is paid especially to the red-headed, ginger, god, gimme ji. To Gimiji, the creator spirit, the Korowai do not ascribe an important role in their daily lives. Once in a lifetime a Korowai clan must organize a Sago grub festival in order to stimulate prosperity and fertility in a ritual fashion. In times of trouble they sacrifice domesticated pigs to the spirits of the ancestors. The Korowai have an extraordinary and rich oral tradition, myths, folktales, magical sayings and charms, and totem traditions. With respect to death and afterlife the Korowai believe in the existence of a reciprocal type of reincarnation, those who died can be sent back at any time to the land of the living, by their kinsmen in the land of the dead, in order to reincarnate in a newly born infant of their own clan. Topic contact with Westerners Topic The first documented contact by Western scientists with members of a band of Western Korowai or Eastern Siddic took place on March 17-18, 1974. The expedition was co-led by anthropologist Peter Van Arsdale now at the University of Denver, geographer Robert Mitten, and community developer Mark Dennis Grundhofer. 
Thirty men were encountered on the south bank of the Upper Islanden River, approximately 12 miles east of its junction with the Colf River and 10 miles north of the Becking River. A basic word list was generated and observations were recorded regarding such things as fire making techniques. In the late 1970s, a few Christian Dutch Protestant missionaries began to live among the Korowai. Dia Suderman, an Indonesian anthropologist, made several documentary films on the Korowai for Japanese television in the 1980s. In 1993, a film crew documented an anthropological study in the Deo village area by the Smithsonian Institution of Korowai Treehouse Construction and the practice of cannibalism as a form of criminal justice. This resulted in the film Lords of the Garden. In 1996 a local Christian community was established, the members of it mainly originating from the neighboring Kambai people. For a long time the Korowai have been considered exceptionally resistant to religious conversion, however, by the end of the 1990s the first converts to Christianity were baptized. In the autumn of 2003, a small team of Bible translators from Wycliffe, Sill moved to Yanaruma. In May 2006, tour guide Paul Raphael led an Australian 60 Minutes crew to report on the people. After a few days filming, the crew were allegedly approached by a man who claimed his six year old nephew Wa Wa had been accused of being a Kakua witch doctor, and was in danger of being cannibalised. The 60 Minutes crew declined to offer assistance. Paul Raphael approached the rival Seven Network, who agreed to send a Today Tonight crew to remove Wawa from the area. Before being able to gain access to them, the crew were deported by Indonesian authorities at the Papuan capital of Jayapura over visa issues. The 2007 BBC documentary First Contact, presented by Mark Anstis, features footage from his 1999 encounter with members of the Korowai people, and describes how they were disturbed upon seeing a white ghost, whose presence indicated the end of the world was nigh. In January to February 2011, the BBC documentary Human Planet commissioned the Korowai building of a treehouse 35 metres high. Recent reports suggest that certain clans have been coaxed into encouraging tourism by perpetuating the myth that cannibalism is still an active practice. Topic architecture Topic The distinctive high stilt architecture of the Korowai houses, well above flood water levels, is a form of defensive fortification, to disrupt rival clans from capturing people especially women and children for slavery or cannibalism. The height and girth of the common ironwood stilts also serves to protect the house from arson attacks in which huts are set alight and the inhabitants smoked out. Topic references topic topic Bibliography topic The Korowai of Irian Jaya, Their Language in Its Cultural Context Oxford Studies in Anthropological Linguistics, 9 by Jarrett J. Van Enck and Lawrence de Vries ISBN 0 19 6 Korowai, An Encyclopedia of World Cultures, Supplement Editors, Melvin Ember, Carol R. Ember, and Ian Scoggard pp. 183-187 by Jarrett J. Van Ank. Macmillan Reference United States, Gale Group ISBN 0-02-865671-7. Society of Others, Kinship and Mourning in a West Papuan Place by Rupert Stash ISBN 9780520256386. University of California Press. Korowai Treehouses and the Everyday Representation of Time, Belonging, and Death, by Rupert Stash. The Asia-Pacific Journal of Anthropology, 12 3, 327-347. Textual Iconicity and the Primitivist Cosmos, Chronotopes of Desire in Travel Writing about Korowai of West Papua, by Rupert Stash. Journal of Linguistic Anthropology 21 1, 1-21. Word Avoidance as a Relation-Making Act, a Paradigm for Analysis of Name Utterance Taboos, by Rupert Stash. Anthropological Quarterly 84 1, 101-120. The Camera and the House, The Semiotics of New Guinea Treehouses in Global Visual Culture, by Rupert Stash. Comparative Studies in Society and History 53 1, 75-112. Knowing Minds as a Matter of Authority, Political Dimensions of Opacity Statements in Korowai Moral Psychology, by Rupert Stash. Anthropological Quarterly 81 2, 443-453. Referent Wrecking in Korowai, A New Guinea Abuse Register as Ethnosemiotic Protest, by Rupert Stash. Language in Society 37 1, 1-25. One Demon Language, The Otherness of Indonesian in a Papuan Community, by Rupert Stash. 
In Bambi Shifalin and Miki Makihara, eds. Consequences of Contact, Language Ideologies and Sociocultural Transformations in Pacific Societies, pp. 96-124. Oxford University Press. The Semiotics of World Making in Korowai Feast Longhouses, by Rupert Stash. Language and Communication 23 3 quarters, 359-383. Separateness as a Relation, The Iconicity, Univocality, and Creativity of Korowai Mother-in-Law Avoidance, by Rupert Stash. Journal of the Royal Anthropological Institute N. S. 9 311-329. Joking Avoidance, A Korowai Pragmatics of Being 2, by Rupert Stash. American Ethnologist 29 335-365. Topic. External links Topic. Expeditions to West Papua, the Korowai The Korowai Korowai Language Research, VU University Amsterdam Mahuan Korowai, Jarrett van Enk's specific subjects from the daily life and symbolic environment of the Korowai On Stash's dissertation Stash's book The Korowai, The Last Cannibals Sleeping with the Cannibals <laughs>